I want to thank Judge Altanaga. I want to thank our Chair Parker, our Chair-elect Dotson, Governor, Chair of the Board of Governors, Sheila McDevitt. Your Honor, my former student, Judge Altanaga, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair-elect, members of the Board of Governors, members of our Board of Trustees, elected officials from the U.S. Congress, from our state legislature, from our county government, from our municipal governments, from our Dade County School Board, mayors, thank you all for being here. Our gratitude is eternal. We are here today to celebrate this magnificent institution. We're here today because we care. We're here today because of our hungry heart for FIU. We're here today because of our commitment to the life of the 21st century mind, our commitment to learning, to entrepreneurship, to research, to innovation, and to creativity. We're here today because we know we can work better to prevent and solve the problems confronting our community using our blessings of knowledge and passion. And we're here today because, yes, there is more to be done. In this new era, students will be at the center, research and creativity will continue to be the driver, and engagement and partnerships will be the mode. FIU is a community born out of hope and determination. For those of you who studied the pictures that were being displayed earlier, you saw that. If one belief defines our development, we have always believed that we could turn the impossible into the inevitable. So let us revisit how our hopes have transformed into reality. Conceived in 1943, then chartered by the state legislature in 1965, we opened our doors to the public in 1972. At first, our university found itself on the margins of Miami, near the village of Sweetwater on Tamiami Trail. Tamiami Trail then, many of you would remember, was but single lanes east and west. Who then, who then could have imagined that we would shake off our isolation and become a major public research university? Who then could have predicted the dynamic growth of Greater Miami as a path-breaking international community with a global reach? Thanks to the faculty, thanks to the staff and their engagement, and spirited leadership from Chuck Perry. Mrs. Perry, thank you for being here. Greg Wolf, Mr. President, thank you for being here. And then Mitch Medik. FIU became what only a few, some in this room, some in this room had imagined. Today we are a major university with world-class programs and faculty. Today we are a key driver a key driver of economic development, innovation, and job creation in one of the most energetic cities in the world, as you heard our professor comment. How'd this happen? Well, we became masters at turning the impossible into the inevitable. Let me explain. When Tallahassee said no, or said maybe, but meant no, we turned the impossible into the inevitable. Working together, building partnerships and win-win relations, we made it happen. Let me illustrate this to you by calling out to you, and let's do this together. I'm going to need four responses, so just follow along with me. From no lower division to a nationally competitive freshman class, you see we turned the impossible into the inevitable. That's where I need you. From a university with no residence halls to two campuses with thousands of residential halls, you see we turned the impossible into the inevitable. 
from a handful of masters and professional degrees to dozens of advanced degrees for our community, you see we turn the impossible into the inevitable. From no public legal and medical education to new law and medical schools in less than a decade that are becoming national models, you see and, you know, thank you. Let's pay tribute. Let's pay tribute to this first era, the era of growth, an era that began with many of you. We had a lot of help, no doubt, from Governors Bush and Christ, from our Board of Governors, from courageous key federal and state legislators, some sitting in this room, and from pioneering and far-sighted donors, Herbert and Nicole Wertheim, Benjamin Leon, Stephen Green, Martin Margulies, Kirk Landon, Patricia and Philip Frost, Sergio Pino, Armando Codina, Ross Covens, the Chaplin family, Sanford and Dolores Ziff, the Bachelor Foundation, the Knight Foundation, U.S. Century Bank, and thousands of others, many, again, sitting right here. We had a lot of help. And there were five other leaders who we have recognized with our Pillar Award for their transformational impact on FIU. Then State Senator, now Congressman Mario diaz balart the late State Senator Jack Gordon, Congresswoman Carrie Meek, Ambassador and member of our board, Paul Sejas, the late community and business leader, Alva Chapman, and Ocala's Carolyn Roberts, who for nearly three decades has been one of the state's great public university advocates at the Board of Regents, the State Education, and the Board of Governors. And I also personally want to thank our Board of Governors Chair and my former boss, Sheila McDevitt, Sheila is there, uh, uh, for being here, for taking time from her busy schedule to show you at Florida International University that she and our Board of Governors, many of whom are sitting here, do care about what happens here. What we dreamed then, in that era of growth, we're living now. And our fourth president, Mitch Badik, accomplished so much for us. There's no one who has dreamed and fought the fight for FIU longer and more successfully than my friend and mentor, Mitch Maydeek. Mitch, please stand and be recognized for all that you've done for this great university. Come on, buddy. Stand up. Come on. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thanks to President Emeritus May Deacon and Nancy for all that they have done. But Dr. Medik will be the first to acknowledge that more needs to be done now, more than ever, and that new eras demand new approaches. So today we begin a new era. This new era speaks to the times we are in and to the heart of who we are and what we will do. And it begins not just with some of you, but with all of you. This new era, obviously, is not like the last, ladies and gentlemen. There's a great deal of uncertainty now about our economy, about our ability to sustain our well-being, about meaningful work and jobs in a global economy where we must clearly reinvent ourselves. Some have lost their nerve and seem to be giving up and giving in. But with your help, with your help, we won't let this happen at FIU. Hope is necessary. Courage is needed, determination is a necessity, and urgency is the common denominator. We must have a sense of urgency about expanding our private financial support. We must have a sense of urgency about our faculty and their ability to thrive academically and professionally. We must have a sense of urgency about our staff because without their professionalism and their ability to perform day in and day out, this organization cannot exceed your high expectations and mine. And we also have to have a sense of urgency about building stronger win-win partnerships 
with key institutions in this community. Ladies and gentlemen, listen with your, your head and your hungry heart to three major challenges for us, all of us, in this new era. The first challenge, we are a public university. It is the challenge of access. We must be accessible so that the best and the brightest in this community, regardless of their zip code of birth or their residence, can get access to the ticket to prosperity in the 21st century, namely a cutting edge university education. I pledge that we will redouble our efforts to ensure that eligible students get as much financial assistance as possible. Governor Christ, and the legislature, with the consent of our statewide student leadership, and without them, it probably wouldn't have been possible, have given us the responsibility and the privilege to set our students' tu tuition. And for many of you, you know that this is unprecedented in our state. I pledge that we will use this new authority wisely only after we can assure our students, our board, and the broader community you that we are operating as efficiently and as effectively as possible. There's a second challenge beyond access, and that's the challenge of quality. So let me ask you something, and I do want a response, and it ought to be loud, and it ought to be the right answer. <laughs> well, the judge talked about a quiz, so. Do you think that quality is important. Yes. One more time. I can't hear you. I want them to hear all the way to Tallahassee and maybe even to DC. Do you think that quality is important? Yes. All right, now we're talking. Uh, our students, truth be told, and you know this, graduate into a global labor market. To be competitive, they must learn with and they must be mentored by faculty who lead their respective professions. They must have access to curricula that looks forward to the worlds ahead. They must have modern laboratories and facilities. So if you're committed to quality, and I think I just heard you say that you were, then join me in finding innovative ways to assure our students that we will not turn our backs on them. We must help FIU to gain a lasting level of financial security. Our future depends upon this commitment. So ladies and gentlemen, when you step up financially, as many of you have already done, when you donate to FIU, you make a consequential investment in our future, the community's future, and you help turn dreams into reality. So access, quality, and the third challenge is that of sustainability. We're committed to high tech, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be. We don't have a choice. As Campbell McGrath pointed out, we can't go backwards. But more high tech cannot come at the expense of high touch. We must move more quickly to use technology in this 24-7 world so that our students can benefit from our teaching anytime, anywhere. But we know that the digital tsunami coming at us is bigger than we think. The revolution in education that high tech is bringing threatens us in the same way, in the same way that traditional newsprint media are challenged to reimagine how to best serve our customers, our students. So while we move more quickly to adapt education to technology, we must simultaneously embrace high touch. High tech necessitates high touch in this 24-7 world. And let me tell you, please, what this means to me. We must do better in making sure that every student knows that they count. We must do better in building their affinity to our FIU. We must ensure that our alumni, as Rosa Jones said, nearly 135,000 right here, is the strongest in the state. We must ensure that our alumni association functions as a network 
to place FIU student interns in positions that can help them to get better jobs and to help fellow graduates who need new jobs to find them. Our alums are a lifeline for a lifetime. Never before have they been so important for their institution, FIU. They, you, are our secret weapon. Thus, I want to challenge you to work with me to keep our university accessible, to develop private funding, and to deploy high tech while not forgetting high touch. These are the urgent challenges before us as this new era unfolds. OK, so where do we go from here? Well, I got I to gotta do this. Yogi Berra, he was that iconic New York Yankee. And he said a lot that is memorable. What he said that I want to share with you that I think is important is that the future isn't what it used to be. So in this new era where the future isn't what it used to be, here's the question. Here's the question. How can we run our year 2009-2010 university on a year 2000 state budget? Because you see, we have 12,000 more students than we did in, year, in the year 2000. And our faculty and our staff are ready. But we still have to pose that question. We can't falter. So many depend upon us in this community. Listen to this. We provide about 50% of all new public elementary and secondary teachers for the Dade County public school system. And I want to thank our superintendent, Alberto Carvalho, for being here to show that he understands how we're going to have to work more closely together. Indeed, the new Dade County Public Schools Edison Eduplex leader, you've, you've read about this new Edison Eduplex, His, the leader, or their new provost, as they're calling him, is Pablo Ortiz. He is a graduate of our College of Education. In the next 10 years, we expect to graduate nearly 100,000 additional students. By the way, anywhere from 20 to 25,000, maybe more, will be graduates of Miami-Dade College. And I want to thank President Eduardo Padron for being here. We will spend over $10 billion in instruction and research to get this done. And we will build, with your help and with a little luck, nearly 500 million in new facilities on our campuses. This is all very, very important and meaningful to our community. But in this new era, we must put our students at the center of who we are, and for me, every student counts. So we have to take responsibility for ensuring that they get a 21st century curricula, expanded advising that will keep them on track, more internships and job placement to ensure that they will fulfill every bit of their potential. Our students must be prepared, ladies and gentlemen, not just to take good jobs, but to create good jobs. In this new era, we have to engage our community like never, never before. This engagement has to pivot around our state-of-the-art research. It has to help solve critical problems in our educational attainment, in water quality, in health, in reducing chronic disease, in alternative energy, in learning about new markets and opportunities to expand our global business reach. But we can't deny in this process, as we do this, that state-of-the-art creativity is essential for the life of the mind, and that the aesthetic appreciation that we should all have is an essential component for a meaningful life. We have a strong commitment to the arts. Please help us to enhance it. In this new era, we must also reinforce partnerships that have already been established with key institutions in South Florida. This includes our public schools, Miami-Dade College, the University of Miami, Dr. Shalala, thank you for being here, the U.S. Southern Command, 
the Youth Fair, the Public Health Trust, the Children's Trust, South Florida Water Management, Metro-Dade County, the airport, the seaport, Miami-Dade Expressway Authority, the City of Sweetwater, the City of North Miami, Hialeah, the City of Miami, Comical, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, the Coral Gables Chamber, our Latin Builders, the Beacon Council, United Way, the Orange Bowl Committee, the Urban League, the Jewish Federation, Fairchild Gardens, the Kavanas of Little, of Little Havana, and dozens of other nonprofits that hold our community together. You see, we're already there, but we have to deepen and strengthen those partnerships. Collaboration is what our world needs. This is what our community demands, and in the process, in the process, we will become the go-to transformational institution in South Florida. I want to salute those faculty and staff who have built partnerships already locally and globally, because based on your research and creative activity, you are helping to address critical needs here and abroad. And I pledge my support to you to continue and expand this important work. You see, you see, our community can't wait. In the end, in the end, this day is about what we share in common. It's about the fact that we care. We have a hungry heart for FIU. We have the courage, hope, and determination to help move FIU forward in this new era, even in these difficult times. We have the desire to make a difference locally and globally. Rosalie and I, we're the luckiest people in the world. We're right where we want to be with you in Miami at FIU. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to please stand now for FIU. Please rise. And I want to end this new era assembly with a quiz, again, <laughs> that our judge promised. I have three questions, and I need a one-word answer to each of these questions. Will you help me to continue the Perry Wolf and Medeek legacy to turn the impossible into the inevitable again and again and again and again? Yes! Will you contribute your time, your passion, your dollars to this great institution to, to ensure that it can enhance its quality and its competitiveness. Yes. Will you have the courage, will you have the courage to work with me to move FIU to the next level to reach its destiny as one of America's great public student-centered research universities? Yes. Your Honor, Judge Altanaga, Mr. Chair, Chair-elect, members of our boards, participants in this new era assembly, the torch has passed. We, can, we are now ready. We're now ready for this new era. And may this new era be as blessed for FIU as was the last. Thank you all very much. <laughs>